You're here, I'm queer, and welcome back to my channel. Today we have a very special muse that was sent to me by Joey Versa of Mary Magpie. Miss Mary Magpie is an 11 and a half inch tall hand painted fashion doll made entirely from luxury resin. And Miss Mary is the only fashion doll who can show off two faces of unique makeup styles interchangeably through her magnetically attachable face plates. I feel so lucky to be able to work on her and see how she would look with my style of repainting. We both wanted to transform her into an iconic character and the one who started it all came to mind, Bild Lilly. If you are unaware, Bild Lilly was a German fashion doll from 1955 and her comics and image was very risque. Until Ruth Handler bought the rights to her and transformed her into Barbie. I really appreciate Bild Lilly's vibe and aesthetic, so we will be creating her out of Miss Mary Magpie today. Make sure to check out Joy Versa and their beautiful dolls on MaryMagpie.com and I will have their links down below. Before we start with this beauty, let's take a quick moment to thank today's sponsor, Wondershare Filmora Go. You guys know I have used Wondershare Filmora before and it actually jumpstarted my YouTube journey. Now you can edit effortlessly with their mobile version, Wondershare Filmora Go. Wondershare Filmora Go is a mobile video editing app, and I really like how easy and convenient it is to use. You know we are all obsessed with TikToks and IGTVs, and this makes it easy for any of us to create awesome vertical videos as content creators, or just to share with your friends and family. It is really handy too, as you don't need a computer to start your video editing journey. Some of my favorite features are the templates because it makes it easy to produce high-level videos with so many styles and options. The PIP or picture-in-picture -picture allows you to insert a picture or video on top and be able to blend them with multiple options. And for Instagram videos, I really like using the stickers to make my posts more vital and it's a fun way to include some call-to-action moments. These are just some of the features you can find on Wondershare Filmora Go, as they also have filters, transitions, masks, and so much more. After you download it, if you comment what you think about Wondershare Filmora Go using the hashtag CreateWithFilmoraGo, you could win a one-year license for free. Filmora Go will choose a user from my comment section as a recipient for the giveaway. If you're extra happy with the trial version, feel free to head over to Google Play and leave a review. Again, thank you so much Wondershare Filmora Go for sponsoring today's video, and let's get back into it. And here I have Miss Mary over here, and she is looking gorgeous, even without her face. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys a little bit of like the, the body and like the full body of it. And look at her knees, it's bent a little bit, so it's posed quite well. I love like just the overall doll and it's just really really great. The resin itself is pretty heavy, so you can tell that the quality is really there. And I love the delicate fingers. Oh, you guys know I'm obsessed with the hand poses. And here we have the faces, the face plates as you can see, and the changes are pretty subtle. I would say the only thing different is really the mouth pose, but the eyes, the nose are all pretty similar, so it's really really good, and I cannot wait to work on them. I actually really prefer the one with the open mouth for some reason. I feel like there's just more personality. And here I just want to show you guys how the magnet work. As you can see, it just pops up right there and there, and it's so easy to remove and like change. And it's really cool, as you can see. You do still want to be careful with it, you know, it's not going to be completely secured because it's, it's magnet it can still come off so regardless though with any ball jointed dolls or any like resin dolls you want to be careful with them because they are a work of art let's go ahead and start with her face obviously we will be repainting both faces so i'm gonna do the first one with the mouth closed first um i feel like that's the classic look anyway so let's do that and this one is going to be more of the build lily um inspiration just because like i'm using the colors that build lily was known for which is like blue eyeshadow and everything so yeah it's gonna be a cool process i did spray this with mr super clear of course um so that our pencils and pastels and paint will adhere to the resin 
As usual, I am taking my Derwent watercolor pencils to kind of map out everything and um, kind of give us an idea of the features that I want to give her. And as you can see, I'm using the blue eyeshadow. I really want that garage door style of eyeshadow for her. And if you guys aren't aware, garage door eyeshadow is literally just using one color for your eyelids. So it's pretty popular in like drag makeup, like the garage doors. So yeah, I'm doing the blue. The blue is classic. Blue eyeshadow with red lipstick. Ah, so, so good. Very, very classic. Very, very vintage. And of course, I cannot not give her a sharp eyeliner. You guys know, the eyeliner. Is paramount with any of my projects so yeah and her face I, I really wanted to give her some details with her iris and her eyes also so I was like you know what I need to give her some details For the lipstick, I really like shading the lips with pastels. I feel like it just gives it more dimension and the lipstick doesn't look as flat. Obviously, it's a 3D object. The face is 3D, so the lips will have dimension. But I feel like adding the shadows, like the fake shadows, contouring the lips just adds more dynamic, like, flair to it. I do want to keep this look kind of like her daytime look and so that's why I'm kind of keeping everything minimal. Again, here I am with my minimalism. Um, it's not minimal at all but you know, like I'm not adding lashes to her, no lower lashes and stuff like that. I really wanted kind of like a day to night transformation with her. So yeah, this will be her daytime look. Over here, I am taking my white gouache paint and I'm just adding some details to her tear ducts and also giving her some catch lights. And of course, we have to gloss up the lips and I'm just using Sculpey Glaze Gloss. Again, like the eyeliner or like the red bottoms, the highlighter for me is a must. And I'm using two colors this time, this white and pink resin metallic pigments over here they are great for doll highlighting and they are so so nice you can actually see the individual like micro glitter in there Ugh, look i mean oh my god the texture i feel like it looks like real skin almost oh my god i'm obsessed i'm obsessed now let's go ahead and work on the other face, the one with her mouth open. This is the second one. And for this one, I do want this to give off kind of like the darker vibe, kind of like vampiric a little bit more. Um, you know, Halloween is right around the corner, so I want that vibe for her. So this would be like Build Lily, like Halloween edition, you know? So I definitely want to give her a more like smoky eye makeup a lot more dramatic i don't know if you can notice but the eyeliner for her is literally almost vertical it's not even going like horizontal on her face it's literally almost it's just up you know what i mean and of course i gave her my my favorite angry brows red eyes with red lip you know the red on red on red i just love red everything red eyes red eyeshadow red lip Ugh, especially when it is matched with black. Oh my god. It's like, it's amazing for me. And over here, I am making her makeup overall a lot more graphic. So I am, you know, highlighting her brow bone. I really want it to look like a mask almost. So yeah, like I said, I want her to have like a vampiric vibe to her. This would be Build Lily you know, transformed into a vampire of some sorts. The face plates are actually really fun to work on. Um, because of the sculpted eyelid, it's kind of like, it's giving me the, the vintage Barbie vibes. And I, I personally really love the, those types of molds, just because, I don't know, I love the aloof look. I like it. 
that they look really serious all the time. They look kind of mad sometimes. So yeah, I'm just really into that look. I'm really not into the smiling dolls anymore unless the character calls for it. For the most part, if I am making my own character, I want them all to be like angry and like aloof and like stoic. <laughs> you imagine all of them are just like, like, you know, RBFs. <laughs> As you can see, this brow is like, I've been using it for my own drag makeup as well, this type of brow. I really like it when it's like up and it looks like an eagle wing, you know, like a bird wing. So it's really nice. I'm so into it. And of course, like the other one, I cannot not give her a really graphic eyeliner. It needs to be sharper than her vampire teeth. You know, the make-believe vampire teeth. I don't know if you guys can notice, but this actually does have a sculpted teeth in the inside. So yeah, I'll paint it later, but you'll see it. Over here, I'm just working my way into smoking out her eyeshadow. Um, and for that one, I use chalk pastels. I try not to use pencils if I'm trying to create like shadows or gradients or smoke effects. Um, I feel like I feel I feel like powders and chalk pastels work best for those. And I decided to give her a beauty mark over here, a Marilyn Monroe beauty mark. I don't know why. I just thought about it. I was like, maybe why not? I'm using pink for her iris, um, just to give it more details, and I feel like it makes it look like it's glowing. Again, because this is going to be kind of like the night version, I am going at it with more heavy-handed, more details like lashes, um, you know, smoky eyes, a graphic under eye liner, so there's a lot of things. Over here, I'm just painting her teeth really, really subtly with acrylic paint. And again, the same exact thing. I am going at it with two different colors of the highlighter, the resin metallic pigment. And for this one, I use red and also white. I actually mix those powders with water and I am just applying it onto her eyelid. I wanted her eyelid to have like a shiny glittery effect. And over here, I have actually never tried this, so this was an experiment um, on the sculpted eyelids. I wanted to add 3D lashes, and I think it worked out pretty well. I'm using the same exact technique, the same exact glue that I've been using before. Um, so yeah, you just really have to wait for them to dry. And I'm just doing some finishing touches. A little more highlighter doesn't hurt anyone, of course. And we are pretty much done with the nighttime Bib Lily face on Mary Magpie. As you can see over here, she looks gorgeous. I'm, I mean, I'm going to be biased, but this is my favorite out of the two that I made. Um, just because this is more me. This is my, like more of my personality. The first one, the, the daytime one, was really cute. And it is a reference to the original Build Lily face, as you can see with the eyebrows. I don't really, t I typically don't do this eyebrows, which is like really, you know, like she's shocked. Um... I typically go for like the really mad aloof face but overall I really like the day and night look and of course I cannot have her body be just one solid color so I am also body blushing it so yes I sprayed her entire body with Mr. Super Clear and I love blushing ball jointed dolls Especially, you know, I you guys know I love body blushing in general, but if it's a ball jointed doll, oh my god, it's just I feel like it adds so much like flair to the already like really artistic doll. Um, so you know, I hope Joey is proud of me for this one. Oh my god, look at that the knees, the you know what. Oh my god, the feet, the hands, the elbows, the you-know-what again. It's just all really good.
Now I kind of want to test the faces just to see how they look. Oh my god, look at that. It matches the face. One thing also as to why I like to body blush, mostly because I blush and contour the head too much. So it's going to look really, really flat. Or, um, you know, it's not going to look great against like a really flat body. So body blushing sometimes is really paramount. Oh my god, look at her. She's so cute. She's like daytime grocery shopping over here. She's doing errands. And then the nighttime... She's having fun, you know, she's meeting people, she's mingling, she's very social, but she's aloof at the same time. Now let's go ahead and make her wig. As you can see, I already have her wig cap that I made out of a old t-shirt and I cut it to really match the traditional build lily like head. And here I have my yarn prepared into wefts. Um, it is a mixture of yellows, blondes and whites. I really wanted the dimension for her hair and I'm just doing the ponytail that Build Lily was known for. I really wanted this ponytail to be as close as her original ponytail so this one is like really sleek back, high pony and she kind of has that 1950s pony, uh, pony style which is like curled outside and she has like you know a little curl in the front as her bangs so it was really nice. And for the outfits, Joey Versaw provided so many looks for Miss Build Lily over here. The first one is this little black dress, the sequined little black dress. Oh my god, the effects. I love how it catches the lights so beautifully. And the quality is everything. They are snaps. I do want to transform this into the nighttime vampiric look, which... Just so you guys know, me and Joey agreed upon, so before you guys go, you know, go crazy. Um, but yes, I wanted to do the handprint, and this is actually a reference to um, Build Lily's design, where she was changing oil, I believe, and she has like handprints all over her dress. So I wanted to translate it into kind of like a more dark and sinister vibe with the bloody handprints. And um, yeah... Now for her other look, this one also is a reference to um, a Build Lily look where she has her you-know-what a little bit exposed in the back. Um, but in Joey's case, in, in our version, it's a little... It's, it's more exposed, you know? Um, but it's so, so iconic. And I love the material that he used. Of course, we have a little lingerie over here in PVC and also red trim, which I thought was so, so beautiful. And of course, every vintage look needs to have some good old pantyhose in black. They also provided me two belts over here in black and white. For sure, I'll be using the black more because, I, you know, it's more universal and I like a black on black look. I just love it. It's more sleek and the quality of these belts are to die for. And they also provided me these white palms. I believe they are 3D printed palms. And they're so lightweight and they're so nice and they are ready to be painted. And of course, I am going for a black with red bottoms. Classic, you know. Everyone needs a black pump with red bottoms, you know. And now let's go ahead and assemble her. This is like my favorite part is putting together the doll. I want to start with her day outfit, so let's put on her day face over here. Her pre-vampiric look, and oh my god, she looks beautiful! Now let's put on her wig, and we're finally done with Mary Magpie as Build Lily.